In the earlier two videos, I have explained the basic understanding of water activity of foods and theoretical background for its measurement. In another video, I have also explained the microbial coping mechanisms under osmotic stress. In this video, I am going to explain how water activity concept can be used to determine microbial growth and food safety. Any living organism needs water to survive and growth. Now the question, why water activity for microbes not total water content? In 1950s, William James Scott, an Australian biologist, clearly identified that active water can be correlated well with the microbial growth in foods, rather total amount of water. Why water activity? We know water activity indicates the energy state of water. That is, it is an indication of the active water in foods. Microbes are unable to use bound water. Similarly, bound water cannot take part in the chemical reactions or unable to interfere with other chemical reactions. Water activity concept could provide generalized rules or limits for the determination of microbial stability of foods. This was the main motive for wide applications of water activity in foods. Water activity 1 is the pure water and nutrient contents are 0. Below water activity of 0 0.91, most of the spoilers microbes are unable to grow. Below water activity 0 0.85, pathogens are unable to grow and below water activity 0 0.60, any microbes are unable to grow. This critical limit is mainly at its optimum growing conditions. One point needs to be mentioned here. Below water activity of 0 0.60, microbes are unable to grow but these may survive even at very low water activity of 0 0.2, for example, whole dried milk powder. Freezing of water to ice can also reduce the microbial growth in the frozen sample. Microbial growth is usually stopped below minus 7 degrees C, that is water activity of 0 0.93. Although enzymatic and non-enzymatic reactions continue even at much lower temperature at a slower rate. Critical limits for a specific bacterium or types within a group differ depending on their types. For example, Bacillus cereus cannot grow below 0 0.93 and Staphylococcus aureus cannot grow below 0 0.86 and produce toxin within water activity 0 0.87 to 0 0.90. This may be due to the diverse coping mechanisms adapted by different bacteria. Please watch my earlier video on the water activity and osmotic stress. I have explained most of the coping or adapting mechanisms when bacteria are under low water activity that is low osmotic stress. What would happen to the critical limits of water activity when other preservation hurdles are used? Water activity limits could be shifted to a high level that is we could have a stability with reduced severity of water activity. You should watch my earlier videos on hurdle technology for basic understanding. We could provide one example considering pH and water activity hurdles. In ready to eat foods, Listeria monocytogens cannot grow below water activity of 0 0.92 at its optimum pH. If pH is less than 5, then critical water activity limits can be shifted to 0 0.94. Therefore, 
determining the critical limit without experiment is a challenge when multi hurdles are used. As we have seen in the earlier slide, more hurdles could shift the critical limit. Recently, boundary of growth and no growth concept is proposed and this concept is now progressing. I can provide one example considering water activity and pH hurdles in the case of Staphylococcus aureus growing stored at 37 degrees C with or without sorbet. The data was generated within the 24 weeks storage. Fructose, glucose and sodium chloride were used to reduce water activity. The growth and no growth boundary is plotted within the water activity and pH axis. We can see the boundary is non-linearly increased with the decrease of pH and increase of water activity. In this case, critical limits could be developed with the complete range of use hurdles. We could not observe growth below line A while we could observe grow above this line. This line A was developed without any sorbet that is no preservatives. Now what would happen when applying 1000 ppm of sorbet? The line A is shifted to the right that is critical limits are shifted and we could find the new critical limits from this line. This region below line B is the no growth and above line B is the growth region. In this case, we could achieve more area of the no growth region that is below line B. One interesting behavior we can observe here at high pH and low water activity there is a minimal effect of preservative that is sorbet is more effective at low pH and high water activity. Recently probabilistic models are being developed to determine the boundary of the no growth and growth regions. I could provide one example probability of no growth and growth conditions are experimentally generated with a number of combinations and logit p function is empirically correlated with the intensity of hurdles. This model was developed for Salmonella. The developed correlation is logit p equal to minus 2.30 minus 2.27 ln t minus 3.01 minus 2.19 ln pH minus 3.35 minus 1.83 ln A0 minus 0.92 where T is the temperature in degree C and AW is the water activity. Logit function is related to the probability as logit P equal to log P divided by 1 minus P. P is the probability. We can use these equations and we could find the probability of growth at any conditions. For example, at a storage temperature 5 degrees C, PA 7.2 and AW 0.95, the probability P is 0.332. That is growth probability is very low. Similarly, at a storage temperature 37 degrees C, pH 7.0 and AW 0.93, probability P is 0.999, that is growth probability is high. Again, at a storage temperature 10 degrees C, pH 5 and AW 0.94, probability P is 0.713 that is growth probability is moderate. P 
peak could be developed with hurdles and with fixed time or without time as a function. <coughs> However, probability does not indicate what would be the growth rate. We can create two food products A and B with the same water activity of 0 0.90. In the case of A, water activity was reduced by sucrose, while in the case of B, water activity was reduced by sodium chloride. If the water activity concept is completely valid, microbial growth in both cases should be the same. However, in reality, the microbial growth in A is observed higher than product B. Thus, the effects of solute could not be explained by the water activity concept. A specific solutes could also affect biofilm formation, coping mechanisms, and stress reactions that is violence behavior. This limitation could not make the water activity concept invalid, rather it needs little adjustment to the critical limits depending on the types of solutes used to reduce water activity. In general, chemical reactions and microbial growth increase with the increase of water activity. However, at some point, high water activity contains low amount of solutes and this can cause limited nutrients for the microbes. This can cause reduced growth of microbes and it is called dilution effect. Similar situation could be in the case of chemical reaction. Therefore, this dilution effect could not be explained by the water activity concept. In addition to the critical limits for microbial growth, water activity can affect the growth rate. In this figure, we can see the growth curve can be shifted to low when water activity is reduced. Although the concept of water activity alone has limitations in determining food stability, food academic scientists and industrial professionals are very excited to have such generic knowledge to predict the stability of foods. For more than 70 years, food professionals are still using this concept most frequently and most of the food authorities include water activity criteria in their regulations and guidelines. Now we are looking to have fundamental based concept which could have the ability to handle multi hurdles to determine the stability of foods. We are looking to the future for further progress. Thank you for watching this video until the end. Please subscribe to this channel if you would like to watch similar videos.